Here I stand upon the corpse of Evermore Park, who released a statement this morning that they will be permanently closing. Evermore Park. He's dead! No! My most recent video covered this as a rumor, but on April 9th, it finally became official when Evermore sent out a statement to multiple news outlets. Here's what happened between then and now. The first thing that got some public buzz was the day after my video was released, Evermore's Google listing changed to say that the park was permanently closed. Anyone can go in and suggest an update to this, so I don't think that anyone did so on behalf of the park in an official capacity since they were trying to keep this so hush-hush. But I'm grateful for whoever did so that people wouldn't show up to the park and just be disappointed when it was closed. Frankly, I wish I would have thought to do that myself. While talking about what this could mean in the fan community, one member shared, well, at least they're still letting events take place. Just for the event in question to be cancelled a few hours later. The post informing everyone included a beautiful amount of sass, crossing out the Evermore logo anywhere it was found and saying the one thing that Evermore never fails to disappoint on is disappointing people. Similarly, YouTube user Mary Moore commented on my video, saying that her school was supposed to have their prom at Evermore this year, but they were told it was cancelled and their money was not refunded. This is what confirmed it for me. I said in the fan discord on this day, March 22nd, that I was fully convinced that the park was really dead this time if they were canceling events like this. Probably would have made a video about it under normal circumstances, but I had woken up that morning in the new Pixar Place Hotel, and I was in the Disney parks when people were having this conversation, so I wasn't going to let any of it ruin my vacation. In this period of time, claims were still popping up that the park had been repossessed by the bank, as had been shared in my last video, but there also started to be claims that there were already new owners. On March 25th, there was a message from internal Evermore communication that leaked out to the Evermore Park subreddit, and then subsequently to the Jenny Nicholson and Salt Lake City subreddits. One of the managing employees, inundated with questions about what was going on due to all the speculation that week, answered in the way that they were able. The intent was to be as honest as they could to do right by the other employees and allow them to start searching for new opportunities. The post itself includes the phrases, I do not have answers, I do not know anything at all, and I've not been kept informed on anything since December. Making it clear that they could not know this for certain, but with everything going on that they, like us, were forced to assume that the park would not reopen. This was the most official confirmation so far, even though we weren't supposed to see it. But I had already been convinced by this point, and again, was not super focused on this. Just after this, the Google listing was again updated to say temporarily closed instead of permanently closed. Which is how it remains today, even though it is now known to be permanently closed. That night, there were reportedly break-ins to the park, with doors kicked in. I was personally unable to find any damaged doors to corroborate this claim. There were rumors online that it was Ken himself that had to break into the park, resulting in the cops being called. But that doesn't make sense to me either. Because from other photos taken in the daytime of them openly moving stuff out, it seems like they still had ordinary access to the property at this time. I can't express enough how little you can trust anything regarding Evermore. The park itself doesn't say anything, so the only choice you have is to listen to what random people say. And I don't know what it is about this community, but half the time someone at some point just made it up. And the speculations that swirl around are always way worse than whatever is attempting to be hidden, so the park is only shooting itself in the foot with its silence. On March 27th, the Evermore Park fan community on Facebook was paused for 51 days to stop us from talking about it. All of the admins of that group except for the official park page were removed, and the conversation that had already been taking place there regarding the park's closure was deleted. The reality started to sink in for more people that this closure was most likely permanent. We moved to a different Evermore fan group that wasn't directly moderated by the park to continue the conversation. Jim, who was the main one in charge of organizing the vendors and presumably the one who informed them to collect their things weeks ago, confirmed that the park was done for. There was definitely still some uncertainty in the community at this point, as demonstrated by this string of comments that I found amusing as it's a literal yes, no, maybe so. But we started to see even more claims that the property had been bought by someone. There was a post on the Brandon Sanderson subreddit with the speculation you'd expect. But mainly, these few days were defined by Evermore increasing its efforts to get everything out of the park. If you peek inside the gates nowadays, all the stuff that we saw last time is completely cleaned out. The signs are gone. KSL News. All eyes are what on what comes next for the area that was Evermore. The park was touted as a year-round fantasy experience with medieval and Victorian buildings. 
Now, early talks are underway to determine what comes next for this 12-acre property. Vanders had the E shield removed from the front facade. It still has a lot of tables and chairs set up, and interestingly, what looks almost like a reception desk if you were to walk through the doors on the south side, which was previously just thought of as the very back corner of the restaurant, and those doors were never used. On the 29th, people noticed the main Evermore sign had been removed and placed here in the grid parking lot across the street. And on March 30th, people reported that the train, the Evermore Express, had also found a new home in that same grid parking lot. Ken was taking everything that he could with him with the intent to sell as much as possible. You can find the train on Discover Live Steam being sold for $250,000. The grid itself now has antique statues flanking the main entrance, which based on Google Images did not used to be there. In the little marketplace that has been set up in the grid parking lot, you can also find the carriage, that fake plastic ice, folding chairs and tables, and a fog machine with extra juice. There's not just one, but several shipping containers, and there are also many things that didn't make it into a container like William Harris's gravestone exposed beneath this tarp that has begun to collect standing water, a lot of smaller Evermore signage, and a bunch of lampposts that have been torn up. Speaking of torn up, it seems like they did a buzzy tier rush job with some of the wires. Dear God, they took the exposed wires! But as of April 9th, the long wait is over and an official announcement has been made. A portion of the park's statement reads, after careful consideration by our management team and board of directors, we have made the difficult and heartbreaking decision to close the park indefinitely. As for why, Ken continues, Evermore Park faced significant challenges from the beginning, which intensified in 2020 with the COVID pandemic closures, followed by reduced consumer spending in 2021 and even more so in 2023, coupled with inflation, gave us little to work with. Hold on, I'm, I'm just looking for any personal accountability. I can only find blaming external factors. Evermore Park absolutely could have succeeded, even in this tough economy. I've never seen so many people become so passionate about something. But time and time again, Evermore would take those individuals that were willing to give so much and alienate and destroy them. Money was spent or withheld at a whim without any appeal to thought or reason. There was no noticeable effort to advertise the park's existence to locals so they could even consider visiting. And when it came to presenting guests with an experience that would entice them to come back in the future, the park sometimes made baffling decisions that felt indifferent at best and sometimes actively hostile towards the idea of visitors coming back. Now, obviously, I loved Evermore Park, but I loved it because of actors and storytellers who gave their heart and soul into creating magical worlds for those who visited the park. So many people at the ground level who put thought into how they could share special and impactful moments with the guests and dedicated time and energy towards that end. They were creating real magic, and although they were the biggest draw, being by far the most mentioned appeal in reviews, employing these individuals was not causing the park's financial woes. When I would drive home after a shift acting at Evermore Park, I would pass an In-N-Out burger that became a tradition to stop at. I'd open the door to go in, and on the glass there was a sticker that said they were hiring starting at $20.50 an hour. I remember thinking that everyone in that building was making more than twice as much as I had just been for the last few hours. The cost of the Moongate Arch alone could have funded a cast of character actors for a decade and still had money left over. The actors provided so much more value and draw for visitors than the park had to pay out to them. But still, it seemed they were always the first thing to be cut to save a buck. But there's no reason to come if they're not there. There were just so many ways that the park fumbled the ball that had nothing to do with the economy. In his statement, Ken continues, Coming out of the new year, we had a few promising opportunities that would have provided needed bridge capital and potential to grow revenue in 2024. Unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond our control, things changed, and as a result, we are unable to continue. I really wonder what Ken means by this, but we can only speculate. Was Ross one of those opportunities to provide capital? What were the things that changed? Reportedly, it wasn't until after Ross and I had had that somewhat optimistic conversation in the other video that he became aware of how bad the financial state of the park truly was. Filing cabinets full of overdue bills, taxes, and fees that had not been disclosed to him. Is his awareness of this what caused them to throw in the towel? Brett Schneider wrote that they kept team leaders informed of continued challenges in January and February. We know from the leaked screenshot that management was not communicated with whatsoever during January, February, or most of March. The justification is that Ken and Ross were themselves under an NDA that prevented them from keeping others in the loop even if they had wanted to. But this chunk of the park's statement directly conflicts with that other claim, and I don't know why they felt the need to rewrite history here. 
The last chunks worth mentioning in the statement are, The past decade has been filled with its share of trials and tribulations, but also many moments of magic and imagination. Evermore Park forged new ground in immersive and interactive entertainment, which presented many challenges as it's never easy to do something new. And, we are grateful for the many amazing experiences that happened in our little park and hope that it made a positive impact on the people who visited. Even with all of the park's problems, I'm genuinely grateful that I got to experience it. And I would still come back as a guest or an employee in a heartbeat, although that might say more about me than it says about the park. I feel like it could have been so much better if those running it were more thoughtful and intentional about what the experience would look like from a guest perspective. But Evermore Park was a second home for many, where you could give in to your inner child and imagination in a way that seemed unique to this place. The next day, on April 10th, Evermore finally updated its website to act as a memorial for the Fallen Park, giving some of the park's history and hosting a collection of pictures of moments from the park. Now that the park is dead, what is going to happen to the vacant property? Brandon Fugel owns that property as of 2021. Brandon Fugel owns the real estate that uh, the park sits on in Pleasant Grove. He describes the event of purchase as such. Evermore has struggled over the years to make their business model work. As an investor in Evermore Park, I did not want to see it fail and wanted to give it a new lease on life, both literally and figuratively. As the new landlord, I restructured a new lease at that time with Evermore Park LLC and paid off the construction liens. That involved Brandon settling millions of dollars that had accumulated. I personally acquired the property over two years ago and settled millions of dollars in liens in an effort to save Evermore Park and preserve the vision, even structuring a new, very friendly lease. We know from Alex's AMA that the monthly rent was $60,000. But now, he says he has not received rent from Evermore since last December. Apparently, Evermore picked the wrong person to not pay this time. The operators of Evermore defaulted on their payments and have since been evicted. After months of not paying rent or expenses, they ceased operations and have moved out. On March 28th, Evermore sent out certified mail to all of the investors informing them of the park's closure. Brandon Fugel said that he felt heartbroken as an investor and a friend that Evermore Park could not succeed, but that he was excited for the next chapter. As I evaluated the future positioning of this unique property, I started engaging several parties. The real estate where Evermore Park was located is being repositioned to unveil a new attraction and project that is going to be announced. I am confidentially working with a new enterprise that will be unveiling exciting new plans and dramatic improvements in the weeks to come. You know, working with a new group that is going to be taking the existing improvements and adding dramatic improvements to be unveiled in the weeks to come. Fans can be assured that the special nature of the project will be preserved. I have my Evermore property under contract with a very well-capitalized group who is not only keeping the 27 existing Old World structures intact, but finishing everything with new improvements. Anyone who follows what I am involved in in the commercial real estate sector knows that I don't do anything halfway. I have a track record for representing the most upscale projects in Utah, and this will be no different. We're looking forward to opening a new chapter in the months ahead. Some rumors say that those who are working with Brandon initially hoped to keep their own version of Evermore going. They apparently expected to be able to keep the Evermore name, IP, and web domain, as well as costumes and props and other materials. But Brandon only had control of the buildings and the land that they sit on. So allegedly, part of the reason for the confusion and lack of communication in March was related to attempts to resolve that conflict. If this is the case, then I think it may have actually worked out in the new group's favor to let that go anyway. There's so much baggage behind the Evermore name at this point, and so many people who have been hurt. If you scroll through the Reddit thread about Evermore's closure, every other comment is someone who did work for them and was not paid. For fans of the live-action questing concept, there is a possibility that this could be a best-case scenario with a new group coming in and taking a fresh crack at it and maybe we'll walk through the tavern or the catacombs again in the future. Or maybe that's a really naive take. Only time will tell. Either way, I'm grateful for the experiences that I've had and the people that I've been able to meet. Even though I've never seen the vast majority of you anywhere other than on the park grounds or online, I genuinely do consider a lot of you to be my closest friends. Which sounds a little pathetic, but it's the 21st century, and sometimes the friends you think about the most are the ones you talk to on AOL Instant Messenger. And on that front, there's a get-together being hosted this Friday night. 
The event on Facebook is called an Evermore Farewell, and there will be a link to it in the description. It was originally supposed to be in the Evermore parking lot, but having a large group of people assemble in coned off private property that has allegedly already been victim to break-ins and visits from the police was decided against. So apparently Ken has given permission for people to gather across the street at the grid, where everything else from Evermore has already been relocated to. At its core, it's going to be a bunch of people standing around in a parking lot. Although I would definitely check the event itself for any updates. Hey, this is Editor Bob from the future and they changed the location again. Now we're gonna meet around a bonfire in the mountains and roast hot dogs and marshmallows which is objectively better anyway. There will also be a white elephant gift exchange at 9pm so if you want to participate just bring a wrapped gift of any kind. Temperatures are supposed to be in the 60s with a very, very low chance of rain. I'll probably pop in for at least a portion to say hi to some friends, so maybe I'll see you there. Because the real magic of Evermore was the friends we made along the way. Done.